School Reuse Advisory Team, Public Forum to Order. Um, good evening, my name is Rick Flannery and I'm the chair of the Center School Reuse Advisory Team. Our team was, uh, oh, and welcome to our second public forum here at the HCAM TV studios. Our team was appointed by the Board of Selectmen in June of 2017. The Board of Selectmen's charge to the team is now on the screen and this forum is part of the team's continuing effort to uh, carry out that, the board's direction to us. The other members of the team are listed on the slide that comes up next. And our team has, since well, we started uh, with our public meetings, has had 15 public meetings, and our first public forum was conducted on February 3rd this year. The team has developed a team plan and process to guide us. The team has presented an interim use recommendation to the Board of Selectmen in January of this year. We distributed a questionnaire to all town departments, boards, and committees seeking their input on their needs and the town needs and how Center School might address them. We distributed a citizen's questionnaire that was mailed to every address in town in the Hopkins and Independent, was available to, at, at town buildings and electronically through the town's website. We received almost 400 responses. The team received input from residents at our first public forum. Since the per first public forum, the team has reviewed the results of the questionnaires and the public forum. The results, which will be discussed later, showed a strong preference that Center School remains a municipal asset if possible. Using criteria established in our team process, team plan and process, we identify municipal uses for Center School and arrange for department, board, or commission representatives to meet with the team. We'll begin with um, team criteria and concepts. Um, we're going to have a representative of the team, uh, Vice Chair Ken Weissmantel, share the criteria and concepts we have developed for the future use of Center School. Great. Mr. Vice Chair. Okay. Basically, uh, my goal today is to get through about 15 slides in 15 minutes, so I will be brief, but I'll be happy to take questions during the public comment period. Uh, there also, these slides are available on the uh, town website uh, so that uh, people can look back at them again and again if they so choose. The criteria and ideas were subjects of the first forum. The ideas came from the surveys, from questionnaires to town boards and committees, from the forum. We then established criteria to evaluate the ideas. The ideas were divided into three priorities. First priority is what is town needs, basically things that town government is to provide and town meeting can approve solely. Town partnership needs were the second criteria. Town meeting and another organization would also need to approve uh, the idea. So it takes a little bit longer to do priority two things. And third would be disp disposition of the property. And that's one of the things we would not like to see done, um, but that would include either demolition or sale of the property. And the ranking of priority one and two needs by this uh, team is still ongoing, and public feedback is most welcome. Next slide. The initial criteria that we developed uh, is that uh, it fits in the neighborhood, that is both as a fit in the neighborhood like you would like to have them as your neighbor, or it fits in with the zoning. The second criteria was it'll approve off-street parking and traffic. Uh, as the use is redeveloped, there'll be more parking on site. The third and really key one is it'll serve a need for the town. Another one that we're still working hard on is the ability to economically convert the school building to serve that need. If it costs too much to do it, obviously that's probably not a good fit. Key thing that was in the surveys and I think within the values of this committee is to preserve the 1928 historic facade facing the town common. We also became to realize that the value of the site and the building to the town because of its site in the center on, on the town common is probably more then what the value could be realized from the sale of the building to a private en entity. It's also compounded the fact that there's significant hazardous materials in the building uh, and therefore 
this is not a cash cow for anyone wanting to, to, to buy it with the, the zoning in, in place. The town of Holliston next door sold their historic building, school building, for one dollar, and they allowed four condos to be built there. Uh, minimize the timeline for reuse. Uh, we just don't want an abandoned building in the center of town, and we do have some temporary use uh, coming up for the, the building. We want to find a permanent use for it. And the last one, which was not discussed at the last forum, but we came across since that, is the use must have an active sponsor or advocate. It might be a great idea, but if there isn't somebody who wants to really push it in town, uh, make it happen. Uh, so that's one of our criteria. Not all the criteria are weighted the same, uh, but this is a key thing. We established the criteria and now we're in the process of taking every one of the uses and evaluating it from it. On our website, there's a spreadsheet, which we're not going to go into today because it's fairly detailed, but we will accept public comment on this is where we're currently ranking it. It's a preliminary version. So I'm going to go through the, the, uh, the potentials that are on the list right now. This first slide is the ones that right now seem to make the cut for the members of the team. But it is preliminary. And uh, basically, the differences between all of these on this first page were not so much in the scoring. Uh, and they all seem to fit both in what the priority needs expressed by the surveys and what the town boards and committees needed. And we're going to talk a lot about it. That's what we have our four, uh, panel members for. And they'll go through in detail on each one of these. But the life skills program, town record storage, which is a major need in the town, town meeting rooms, school administration, uh, town office space, continuing gym use, parks and rec, youth commission, community center, uh, link in the upper trail, and then some ancillary uses such as marathon activities and voting place that are good for one or two days of the year, but you're not going to keep the building just for those two uses. In the additional uh, lower rankings for in the priority one group, remember this is potential town needs, are listed on this slide. Uh, and that includes some storage needs and some other uses that, quite frankly, we find there, that there's better places to put these in the town. And uh, the needs can be accommodated better than this place. Uh, so then the next group is priority two rankings. And all these slides have been in order of where we are currently ranking them within themselves, but the prior two rankings would be town partnerships. So if we can use all the space for priority one town needs, we probably won't get to priority two. But these are some of the ones that are on the evaluation aspect. Some of these ones, the there isn't a sponsor because, say, the International Marathon Center doesn't really want to be there. Uh, so. Let's go to priority three. We've, we've not ranked these at this particular time because basically uh, these are disposition of the property and this is kind of the last result if we can't get anything in priority one and two needs uh, done. So we have a lot of early concepts. These are early. These are preliminary. These will change. Uh, we've, the town manager has hired an architect to help us on this, and we will soon have a report that will help on some of our costing of this. Uh, we have already received a hazardous material report and estimate. It's $890,000 to clean up what is in that building today. So if you sold it to a developer for a dollar, he'd be putting in the first $890,000 basically uh, to take care of the building or to tear it down. You are still paying that first because you have to clean it up before you take it off to the landfill. So that's one of the things we've gotten. We're working a lot harder on professional input, which will include some costing of numbers. So we'll have more work on that done after the end of the summer. Let's go on to the plot plan. Uh, I think everyone is aware of where the building is, but I'd like to point out, you got your pointer working there? It really doesn't do well. Okay, the, the building, the piece <coughs> of easement that's in pink is an easement, and the town owns the, the land to the right of that, 
and we also own the big portion right almost near the words on the right hand side. And so there's a lot of open space in the back of the building that this whole thing connects to. And I think it's important to understand that in, in context of, of it. So it does connect to a lot of open space. Building layout itself, uh, the old building is approximately 55 feet deep and 92 feet uh, uh, wide, that's in the front. The yellow portion in the middle is the 1950s edition. And then we have what we built in the late 80s, uh, six classrooms, a gym, and an elevator in the back. Another preliminary concept in, is let's make two separate buildings. The 1950s section has served its useful life. There's not much redeeming to that other than kind of storage. It's, it's, it doesn't have the historic character and it doesn't have the nice newer construction of the 86. So a lot of things we've been t toying around with is let's separate the two buildings. The library first started that concept uh, when they were studying their location. So uh, let's go to the next slide. This is an aerial view from uh, 2017. It was actually taken the, the day before the, mar the afternoon before the marathon. That big white tent is a temporary marathon activity. Uh, so, but this is the center school looking at it from above. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Concept overview. We want to repurpose the historic building. The second thing we want to do is reuse the 1980s edition. The classrooms, the gym, the elevator, that section of the building's in pretty good shape. We want to eliminate rental expenses. We have a couple departments that you'll hear from uh, coming up that rent space in other buildings. We want to free up two classrooms in the Hopkinton High School that are part of the life skills program currently. In a few years, we'll probably be needing some more classrooms in the high school. This might be the easiest way to get two new classrooms in the high school. And if I remember correctly, the four ones we just added on to Marathon Elementary School cost us about a million dollars each. So, you know, look at that as maybe an easy way to get or defer some of the money. Uh, this would also be a great link in the Upper Charles Trail. So we keep a Parks and Rec Youth Center in the concept in the old, or in the 1980s <coughs> edition. We repurpose the historic building for school administration, life sk skills program, town record storage, youth and family services, and meeting rooms, all big needs within the town. Next one. Major changes. We get a new entrance to the Parks and Rec building. We have to obviously demo the 1950s edition, and that would include perhaps the principal's office uh, on the north side of the building. And then we add uh, a new entrance to the Parks and Rec Youth Center area. Uh, we would uh, have a new elevator and door to, and record storage addition to the historic building. That's kind of in the center por portion. So the working entrance would really be this new entrance in the center where the, all the parking is. Uh, you could still enter it from South or from Ash Street, but most people would be using the area with the parking on site. Uh, we'd have some green in the courtyard space, and we'd do complete uh, exterior preservation of the old building. Next slide. So parking, most of the parking will be in the center. If we do need more parking after they do some studies, we can use some of the field space out, out back. Uh, you also see the Upper Charles Trail. This is one concept of having the trail along the side, uh, south side of it, uh, could go on the north side, but you would use that trail as a walking access to get back to the playground and the back part of the property also and the sidewalks within the interior could connect to the trail area. Uh, we could probably have some new angle parking on Ash Street to add, add to the parking. The last slide I've got here is we're just starting funding sources, but uh, it's gonna cost a reasonable amount of money to do this. We can repurpose the half a million dollars the town meeting voted for a parks and rec facility at Fruit Street 
Uh, the gym kind of does a lot of that purpose, and they found to build that building on Fruit Street would cost a lot more than the half a million dollars town meeting voted. CPC is a possible funding source for the historic preservation. This is a key element uh, of this committee. Our goal of the committee is to preserve the historic building. And, uh, CPC funds is for historic preservation. They can pay a lot, not only in the preservation of the facade, but they can also pay as much as they want to on the repurposing of the building uh, so that uh, that might be a big source. I wouldn't discount state grants, either historic, maybe some of these are school uses, maybe there's some school funding somewhere available. You never know until you start asking. Uh, Senator Spilka is going to be president of the Senate. You never know where she comes through with a, a buck or two as president of the Senate. Uh, town meeting and voter approval of the debt exclusion, that's going to be probably the key, key vote where everyone in town gets to decide what to do with it. And the last potential funding source um, is to offer life skills program uh, to other towns. And perhaps that might be a revenue source that would offset some of our costs to renovate this, this old building. So this is really a beginning. We're going to have, have a lot more cost information over the summer. And I'll turn it back to the chair. Thank you. So the next portion of our uh, event tonight is going to be panel discussion. So we have invited some of the potential users of the center school facility to speak to you tonight. Um, so we'll start off with the Hopkins Public Schools who are represented by Dr. Carol Kavanaugh, the superintendent, and Nancy Kavanaugh, who is the, current, the incoming school committee chair. So, um, Would you like the clicker or would you like me oh, to? Oh, you can click. Okay. That's great, thank you. <laughs> All right, so our, our first thing is to just talk about the 18 to 22 program. Uh, by law, and you can go to the next slide for me. Um, by law, through special education law, we have to offer services to students who are 18 to 22. So you can offer them services in district, you can offer them um, outplacement services, but we are required, in fact, to offer services to students who are 18 to 22. Currently, we are using, as you stated, three cla two classrooms in the high school, and I believe we have three students in that setting right now who have remained in district who are ages 18 to 22. Um, one of the things that they would ask for us to do is to not have a program in your current high school because the belief is that kids have already attended that high school for four years. They need some kind of new setting and they need some kind of new setting where they can gain autonomy and sort of navigate their own lives outside of that high school setting. So the small print lets you know that transition services are based on individual students' needs, their interests, their strengths, and, and those pieces. So that's what we consider when we take a look at what kids need for an 18 to 22 program. If we were to use the center school for that, we would need a facility that had a kitchen and full bath, or, or baths, um, girls' bathroom, boys' bathroom, perhaps a shower facility. Um, it would have to have handicap ask, access, and I will show you a little bit of that on a subsequent slide. Um, there would need to be classroom and workspace. Uh, we would need to have space for therapies, OT, PT, those kinds of things that would be part of a student's IEP um, or individualized education plan. Uh, there would need to be living or classroom space, washer dryer facilities, and we would have to have a place to park the van. So why is Center School a very good location for us? Uh, Center School, because it's in that downtown area, would give kids access to um, work opportunities. Um, if we were in that location and we had a kitchen, they could do all kinds of food preparation. If the gym remains there, we would have access to you know, fitness facilities, which is also part of that 18 to 22 program. There would be wonderful community engagement because you are downtown. Uh, some of the things that we had talked about early on is that if you have that courtyard, you might be able to do things like farmer's markets or things that would engage students in the 18 to 21. So what I have done since my last presentation to the center reuse is I went over to Westboro where they have a new 18 to 22 program 
I think this is the first year that it's sort of really up and running. And I took some pictures so that we could take a look at what their facility looks like. So when you walk in um, off, the, off the rotary, you can see that they have really nice living space there. It was uh, suggested to me that they have that round table because in the morning they do a sort of morning meeting kind of thing where all the kids will gather. Um, sometimes, you know, kids will just be there in the afternoon and kind of hang out and watch a movie, but they have like, uh, like a really nice thing to sort of build social IEP goals. So what you see in the picture on the left is their classroom space. You can see that they have an overhead projector, a whiteboard, those two big tables for classroom learning. What you don't see in the picture is that there's a smaller room off to the side where there is actually a door. So if a student needs quiet space to work, there's um, a quiet workspace as well. In the bottom right hand uh, corner, you see the washer dryer facility. And I put it in there because I wanted to indicate that it had been donated. A lot of the things in the setting were donated to their program. And up on top, they have a yoga room. <laughs> so I'm not suggesting that we need a yoga room, but what I think is so neat about it is that there's someone in town who donates her time to come in and do yoga with the kids. And so they have you know, that as a PE opportunity. And I guess I put that in there to sort of say, you can really tailor your program to be anything you want it to be. I mean, we have a great advantage in having a gym on site. You can also see on the left their kitchen facility. If you look very carefully under the kitchen sink, you can see that it's cut out, and it's cut out so that wheelchair access would, would be appropriate for that setting. Um, there is a very, very long kitchen table that goes down the middle. The kids all, when they are on site, will make lunch together, sit and eat lunch together, clean up after lunch, do their own dishes, so they really learn a lot of life skills there. The upper right hand corner uh, room, it's very interesting to me. It's a small room, it probably has only eight or 10 chairs in there. And there's a widescreen TV and kids will conduct their own IEP meetings. So in 19, 20, 21, 22, they're running their own meetings, which I thought was really exciting. And then the last thing that I will say about their program, and this is part of their self-sustaining piece, is that they are opening a business called the Sugar Shack. So you can see that there's a very big wide open space and there will be tables and chairs so that if kids want to come in after school and get you know, candy, ice cream, those kinds of things, they can do that. But they're also planning to market you know, baskets so that they can produce all kinds of things to sell for you know, events that somebody might want to buy a big basket for. They anticipate that it will be able to pay their rent and they're in the old Ace Hardware building. Uh, in addition to our 18 to 21, pro 18 to 22 program, we might need some office space. So currently where we are on Hayden Row, we have about 5,000 square feet. And currently in there, we have the superintendent, assistant superintendent, director of HR, director of finance, director of technology, and maybe we will be moving in the director of special education and her two supports, as well as our English language coordinator. And all of those people obviously come with different layers of support. So the director of HR, for example, has three people with her. Right now, we have people who are doubled up in offices. If we decide that we are going to move out of the White House across the street on the middle school property and bring in special education to our setting, that will mean three more people come into our setting. And it's getting a little bit crowded over there. All I've done on this slide is shown you the offices that are upstairs and you can see how many of those things are shared or will be shared in the event that special education needs to come across the street to us. The other thing that will happen is we'll lose a conference room, which will be difficult because currently in the White House they do an awful lot of IEP meetings and if we lose one conference room to offices, we only have one left and it will be, I think, a lot of push and pull in terms of sharing the space. All right, so those are our two big ideas. I'm happy to take any questions. I don't know if you're waiting for well, the end to do that. I think if we could wait till the end, I'll ask you to hold your questions until we've gone through all the panelists. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Um, our next panelist is um, going to be speaking on behalf of the Parks and Recreation Commission and Parks and Recreation Department. It's uh, uh, Bob Dubinsky, who's also um, a liaison to our, our, our team. So um, Bob. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we also want to thank <clears throat> the Board of Selectmen for the opportunity to be a liaison. A uh, little history, Park and Rec, uh, about two years ago, was displaced from the town hall, gladly. We took some space, uh, 88 Main Street, and 
in conversations with the town manager, it was kind of understood that our big goal was to go ahead and occupy a portion of center school when it was decommissioned. Uh, another important point is we'll probably be your first tenant because we host the summer school program at center school and we're anxious to do that. Uh, Ken had mentioned that we have uh, half a million dollars that was granted to us in the form of uh, capital funds that after uh, surveying the sports groups in town, that half million dollars really would, wouldn't support a sufficient, large enough building for their activities. We're anxious to get the town's approval and we appreciate the committee's suggestion here to go ahead and have that opportunity to take those funds on behalf of the town, parlay that into the support of the back section of the building. Um, our staff, is uh, in place to go ahead and help manage that back portion of the building for programming, important youth services, community center, uh, a lot of the things that you saw on Ken's slide. The, uh, there's a number of programs that we're presently not able to support that we had anticipated that indoor practice facility would accommodate, cheerleading, a couple things that aren't on here, wrestling, as well as the outcry from outside sports groups once the residents of Hopkinton are served to go ahead and utilize the building. And we've realized that revenue gen at Fruit Street quite successfully, which will all come in the form of replacing the fields when they need to be replaced. Further not putting a burden on the town to go ahead and replace the turf. <coughs> Some communities are in that spot. Uh, there is a degree of you see there the uh, non-athletic programming, again, to include the, uh, the Youth Commission, the Community Center, uh, meeting rooms that are uh, at a premium within, within the town. And as the school mentioned, there's some significant cost savings as well as cost generation that we have for some of our programming, whereas we wouldn't ne necessarily need to support, or excuse me, pay for the, uh, the rent where we are at 89. 88 Main Street, as well as generate some additional income. And these are very rough numbers. Happy to go ahead and explain some, some ideas of where they'll come from. And I'll, uh, I'll look forward to your questions afterwards. Thank you. Um, next on our uh, panel is uh, the Director of uh, Youth and Family Services for the Town of Hopkins and Denise Elder. She'll also be addressing Hopkins and Youth Commission um, uh, needs and that uh, center school might be able to provide. So, I'll turn it over to you, Denise. Hi, everyone. Um, would you mind just scrolling to the fourth slide, please? Sure. <laughs> Sorry, I was told to shorten it up a little bit. Um, <laughs> maybe back one. You're That's testing great. my yes. skill here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, as uh, the town social worker for youth and family services, my job is to work with youth and families that are struggling. So I'm very much a, uh, a risk reduction and risk management professional. So my number one priority is to always think about ways that we can enhance well-being and wellness and reduce risk. And so I've kind of made a bold statement on that first slide, but I think I can stand by it. Um, I would say that family life now is more complicated today than ever before. Children and teens and families are facing a variety of challenges, and you've heard about them all over the place, I'm sure, as have I. Mental health challenges, depression and anxiety, substance abuse and addiction, social media challenges, and a number of other stressors with parents working, financial hardships, school and social challenges, et cetera. Um, in my office in the three years that I've been serving the town, we've had sort of increases and increases over the years of inquiries for support, so that now we're at the place where in the first six months of this year, we've had as many inquiries for support as we did in all of last year. So that sh sort of shows to you how many families are reaching out for support for a variety of needs. And so I'm always looking at how can we create a community that enhances support, enhances wellness, and reduces um, risks to youth and families. And in my business, we talk a lot about developmental assets. And one of the ways that we increase developmental assets for a community is by offering opportunities to come together. So to me, a youth center or a community center would be an incredible opportunity, not only for youth to have a place to go, um, because oftentimes I'm serving youth who feel quite isolated and alone, like they don't have a place, like they don't have a peer group, perhaps they're not a superstar at sports, perhaps they're not very involved in lots of other places. Um, 
And so they really do need a place to gather, to meet other people, to use their time constructively, to have a place where there are other peers, where there are mentors, where there are grown-ups that can kind of support them. And so in terms of developmental assets, a youth and community center offers opportunities to actually buffer against the challenges that I see and that lots of families see, to reduce stress and to enhance well-being. So through constructive use of time with lots of creative opportunities and programs, exercise and wellness, early release day events, speakers, a place to develop social competencies through building relationships with peers and caring adults. Um, one of the great ways that we develop competencies and buffer against risk is for kids to have at least one adult outside their family that they can count on that they know cares about them, and this would be a place for that. And then building a strong sense of community. So a community center would be a place where we could all kind of gather, but especially a place for community celebrations and where we can make con connections, especially across difference. So as our town has changed and as the population has grown, we're seeing lots of different folks coming into town. And to connect across difference, I see as a place where there's a gap. And this would offer a place for us to really see ourselves as a community. Um, could you go to the next slide, please? Sorry, it's very small. Um, so what would this look like if it were used for a, a portion of community and youth center? So a shared community space for people to enjoy, gather, and get support. Um, I would love to see this as a permanent home for my department. So um, as I'm sure all of you know, when Town Hall was damaged, we moved to 80 South Street. And my department is now going to be moving to the old DPW site um, on Fruit Street. So that makes us even more remote. One of the great draws of being housed in town hall was that kids could walk to my office. I could enjoy you know, going downtown with kids. There was a lot more opportunities to do things. Um, being even more remote is not a problem for families who can transport and are not working after school. But for kids who need support in the after school hours and they don't have parents that can drive them, it's really important for me to be accessible um, by walking. So center school is obviously a great place. I love the idea that we could have an outdoor space to play. It's not, it's not great to only have one option, which is to sit in my office and maybe play some games. It's great to have the opportunity to go outside, play basketball, hit some balls on the common. Um, you'll see a little dream at the bottom of that with my wish list, which is a community garden, a place where um, we could use therapeutic gardening and working in the soil as part of what we do, um, a space for animals. So not, nothing big, just maybe some bunnies and some chickens, because that also <laughs> is very therapeutic for kids. So just to sort of enhance what we're able to offer through the types of therapeutic support that we, that we provide, kitchen space. And so obviously a lot of what you've heard from the other panelists, I think that the use that I'm looking for would dovetail very nicely. We would all be working together. It's incredibly exciting for me to think that I would be with these other folks who have these other programs that we could all sort of use the space together. That's, that's all for me. Just a, um, if, if I could add on a little bit for the, um, when um, the Youth Commission Chair uh, attended, uh, the Youth Commission Chair was very interested in being able to have space to be able to run more programs um, in addition to what Denise does. She is hoping to be able to run, you know, enrichment programs on top of, you know, the, um, you know, the intervention type programs that you're running. So she was very, very intrigued about having the opportunity to be able to utilize some of the space either in the 1986 building or, or another part of the building to be able to have classes that actually run for both youth and family. So, so that, you know, just, I know we asked you to move it along a little bit, but I, I, I wanted to make sure that that got, um, that got advocated for as well. So. Uh, excuse me. Sorry, Dad. DJ here from Dinnerfield. I know this is probably going off the off, but I have to leave to go somewhere else, but I wanted to have a few words here tonight. So I don't know if I could do that, but I address a large portion of our community and a particular portion of that if community. I, if, I could, if I could, if we, if we are going to uh, deviate from our plan, I would have you go up to the microphone, identify yourself. Sure, yeah. And, uh, and if you'd like to, you know, if you absolutely have to leave. I do, I really do. And then I'll pl please Thanks invite you up. Appreciate it, thank you. <clears throat> Hello, my name is CJ. I run a very humble business here in the town of Hopkinton. And I guess I have quite a, a fragmented or, or large audience. And a huge portion, 31% of this audience, are from the age of 12 to 17. So I said about asking them what do they want. And I think as a community, how you build it is find your jewel, your asset. What do we sell the town on? And then invest in them. Education. They're climbing the walls to get in here of Jericho to buy a house. 
Why? Because our children are doing well. Our educational system is very advanced. It's great. It's thriving. They don't have a spot. They need a spot where there's no parents. There's maybe a campus supervision, but they need a spot that's theirs. Go and ask them what they want, and then give it to them. That's what we should be doing as leaders in this community. That's our asset. Our jewel is our young, the youth, the education system that we are pushing down out there like the big beacon. Great, wonderful. But they have spoken, and they've said something to me, and they said they're bored. And quite a lot of them know people who get into misbehaviour because they're bored. You know, I come from very working class Dublin, very proud of it. But we had in the 70s pool halls and uh, gaming machines and swimming pools and parks and all that kind of stuff. And I come to a place like Hopkinton and I'm only a blow in, but the stark thing about it is that's not there for the, the people that we're supposed to put our arms around and grow. And I think your sentiments are fantastic. I think it's exactly what the town needs to use the space for. However, if we're going to do it right, ask them what they want and let's give it to them. And I'm sorry I have to rush, but I've got to be in Cambridge and I just wanted to say that and, and just, you know, that's what they've said to me. That's all I know. Can, can you identify what organisation you're with? I, I own Bittersweet here in town. Oh, Bittersweet. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean so, that. So quite a lot of them work for me and talk to me. And, you know, they're 31% of my market. And they've said it to me, you know. You know, I, we, we chat, you know, we, we pass it. You know. So, so I think it's important that if we're going to do it right, as a town, we owe it to start with them. And our quantitative and qualitative research should be done towards the youth of the town and surrounding towns, perhaps, and build something that's, that they are part of. And I think at least for them, they probably have difficulty saying it. They don't want adults. They want a space for them where, where we don't exist. And for that time, we can supervise it and look on from the outside. But let's give them what they want. And I think it will have a very positive impact on the entire town. Because we know where they are and who they're with. And you know, we're actually putting them into a place, the place that they, they don't like. So let's create the place that they want. You know. All right, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you for your input. Thanks very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, we'll continue on with our panel discussion. And next on our, um, our list is the uh, chair of the Upper Charles Trail Committee. Um, I'm sorry, the town clerk. We'll go to the town clerk next. I'm sorry. Um, that would be town clerk Connor Deegan. And um, if you discuss what you think so, the um, school can do for you. Thank you. Uh, so I'm going to sound like a bit of a, a broken record here, too, because I love a lot of the ideas that have been brought up, and I kind of echoed some of them. Um, I kind of approached this looking at it as uh, someone who works in town hall, lives in town, and uh, is someone who also went to center school and loves the building. Um, so I, I was kind of, when, I, when we first got these surveys, I was looking at what kind of problems were uh, that I could identify in the community. And uh, so from my professional perspective, I was looking at the fact that the rapid community growth, as we've seen, has put a lot of burden on the services that we provide in town. Uh, and we would need increased space and services in general to be able to continue our level of service to the town and the community. Um, the current storage of our records at the moment is extremely inadequate. I don't know if anyone's seen it. I think a few people uh, in the room may have seen our current record storage, which is in the basement level of the old DPW building on Fruit Street. Uh, and it's musty. Uh, our professional contractors have looked at it and said that the constant heating and cooling and humidity is putting all those records, which are kind of ranging from the uh, 70s to the 2000s at high risk for long-term damage. And many of those are permanent records that we can't risk losing. Uh, as much as I'd like to say we can put everything electronic, unfortunately the state won't allow us to do that. Uh, and then as a number of the other panelists have mentioned, we have departments who are renting space and we have a building that's about to be vacant. It would be wonderful to see school administration be able to move out of there and have a space that's also a sentimental asset as the piece that was the, the building that started the centralization of our district. Uh, I mean, and having youth and family services and 
the Parks and Recreation Department there would, as kind of we discussed during a meeting when I was last with the, uh, the team, it would make it the de facto youth center of the town, which would allow for uh, people to be there and have activities and you know work with multiple departments that all kind of work together already and have them all in one spot. That's also still centralized in the downtown and close to other town departments so we aren't distant from each other. Uh, and I also heard a lot of people discussing the demand for parking downtown and so I kind of looked at that in my identification as well. Oops. So, so the, uh, the record storage was a big one because of the fact that the current storage is, as I said, inadequate. Uh, we currently have about 930 square feet of space for storage. Uh, those records are also stored with things like uh, facilities equipment and the shovels for groundbreaking events. Um, so putting those into a dedicated space would be ideal to ensure that they are able to continue being useful to the town. And as of right now, we haven't been able to scan a lot of those documents to allow for continued use at quick access. So having it closer to town hall and other town departments than it is right now on Fruit Street would also decrease the time it takes for facilities and other departments to gain the documents that they have stored down in our archives. Um, so when I was looking at the, um, actually, can you hit the next slide? I think we're on the. No, that was oh. it. So it only had one of the slides. No worries. No, it had both. This is the second slide. Go back. Yes. Might have got appended to some read. So maybe, maybe you anyway, can speak to it. Yeah, I'll just speak to it. So I, when I had first heard of the removal of the 1950s for edition, I thought that I had never thought of it before and thought it was a, actually a great idea to increase a little bit of parking or even add some green space in, like a few have already mentioned. Um, I was also looking into that having the secondary building as the 80s edition would be a great spot to fit youth and family services as well as uh, parks and recreation. Uh, I don't want to see them moved out onto the periphery of town anymore either, so I'd love to have them downtown right there uh, and being able to really service everyone in the community from a central location. Uh, so, and then I kind of thought the front building as being that iconic historic building would be perfect for the school department, obviously with necessary renovations to make it uh, up to that point. Uh, for record storage, I was considering ground level due to the fact that the, uh, the current storage, uh, the current number of files that we have is quite tremendous and putting in higher levels would risk structural damage as we've already seen with Town Hall just from land use records. Uh, this would hopefully be able to move records from all different town departments that don't necessarily need to be stored on site at all times to a central location where we can have a depository, as I said, potentially on the ground floor where it's out of the way of other offices and services. Uh, and the last thing that I had pointed out was that currently with the way that the 2020 census is looking and the growth that we faced in town, uh, by 2021 likely we will be facing re-precincting and even the addition of a new precinct. Now, Looking at the current space we have in the middle school, it's perfect for four precincts. I do, don't think it could fit a fifth precinct. And likely it would result in us having to look for additional space to house uh, one or two precincts. And I was considering the idea that potentially the gymnasium would be able to house that for the few events that we end up having per year. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Town Clerk. Um, and our last panelist for um, the evening is um, is the uh, chair of the Upper Charles Trail Committee, and uh, she'll be discussing how uh, the center school facility and grounds might be able to help their committee. So um, our chair of the Upper Charles Trail Committee is Jane Moran. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, 
As some of you might know, the Board of Selectmen charged our, um, created and charged our committee with coming up with a um, trail that starts in Milford, goes through the center, goes through the town of Hopkinton using the center trail, and ends up joining the, the uh, Ashland Upper Trail. At the end of the day, there will be five towns that are connected to this um, contiguous circle. Milford, Holliston, Ashland, Ashland, and Sherburn. To meet that end, we have started at the, uh, this is a um, conceptual map. It's purely, there's not a lot of detail in it. That's not the purpose of tonight's meeting. We start at the Milford Trail parking lot. We make our way down Route 85 to the center trail. And then we would connect with Main Street and we work diligently with um, multiple organizations, DOT, the town selectmen, and ultimately the town voted to incorporate our recommendations for the downtown corridor. So that would land us at the town common. Ideally, what our committee would like to do is to be able to advise the Board of Selectmen that we would like to go through the center school property through, as the, um, Mr. Weissmantle mentioned, through open, wide open spaces that the town currently owns on the east end of Pro um, Hopkinton, crossing Route 135, where we recently purchased, uh, we were recently deeded Legacy Farms property then travel up through um, Legacy Farms, where we're currently in conversations with them, where they're going to grant us an easement, where we would end up at the Hopkinton State Park, where we're also in currently in conversations with the DCR. And they're very excited about the possibility of having Ashland join there, too. So as you can see, our overall concept is really quite lovely. So the second slide shows um, a just a, cure, uh, a closer up of coming out of the center trail on the lower left hand side, traveling down Main Street, and then through the center school. And then after you cross that uh, pink line at the top, that's the open space that heads um, toward the right hand side of the screen. And then the red line that travels north, you can see where it crosses 135 and would ultimately end up the Huffington State Park. The next slide shows a conceptual plan of, again, starting off on the left-hand side, coming up through Main Street, where you'll see a red dotted line, and then the solid blue line, it forms a square. That square is the town common. So the orange building is, a, is the uh, center school. So we would prefer that um, this committee recommend to the Board of Selectmen that the Upper Charles Trail be granted a 15 to 25 foot easement down the south side of the property so that we could hook up to the open space uh, headed east. Um, this would be a wonderful achievement if we could pull it off and it would be a wonderful opportunity for the total town including all of the needs of the school department, the youth and services, parks and rec, it would be a jewel if we could pull this off. <coughs> so thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, so at this point, uh, we've concluded with our panel discussions. We're going to move on to the public input and questions. Um, and um, one, one of the ways we, we have three different ways we can um, get uh, input and questions to the team. It's um, in person here um, at the microphone um, by emailing to uh, center at hcam.tv uh, and by Facebook and actually a fourth way by phone at 508-435-7880. Um, we'll be able to get the questions delivered up to the, um, up to the desk here and be able to address any questions or um, any uh, input that anybody has and it will be preserved for the committee to review, at, for the team to review afterwards. So um, what I'd ask is, um, is that when you come to the microphone that you identify yourself, uh, name and address for the public record. Um, and I, I will, at the beginning, I, I know this is one of the big questions,
but we're just not going to be able to answer tonight um, is what is it going to cost. We don't have the answer. As the vice chair mentioned earlier, uh, the town manager's office has been working with an architect to come up with some cost estimates of, uh, of some of the options that we've discussed with him and we're, we just don't have that information yet. That will be provided at a later time. The minute we have it, we'll, we'll get that information out to the, to the public and, and if it requires another public forum to discuss that, we'll uh, certainly consider doing that. So um, to make sure we get everybody an opportunity, please, um, if you could, uh, limit yourself to one question um, when you come up to the mic and um, if you could direct the, uh, the question to the person you'd like to have answer the question uh, through the chair and we'll get your questions answered and any input we, we certainly want to hear so that when we go back and look at the results of tonight's forum we can consider everything. So um, at that point I'll open it up to any public input or questions that uh, anybody in the audience has or anybody um, on Facebook, phone, or email would like to share with the team. Um, go ahead, Mr. Regan. Mr. Regan. <laughs> I got a statement first, so that doesn't count as a question, Ricky. Go ahead. Uh, Denise, you said that last thing there was talking about animals in a garden. Can I bring my four woodchucks up and put them in there? <laughs> as long as they don't bite. A mother, or they won't bite you. Mother and three babies. Um, I had a doctor's appointment in Framingham. Are you familiar with the old Lincoln School, Lincoln Street in Framingham? Medical offices. Framingham, the city of Framingham, owns that. Do you know how they're making money on that one? I'm, I'm glad I'm not making a choice. I think they're all great presentations. How they make money on that, they have turned it into condos and sold it to the doctors. I, I, the doctor I was talking to said, yeah, that's how we own this, it was a condo. Obviously, they pay the condo fees. Um, but anyway, I'm glad I don't have to make a choice because the presentations are all fantastic and they all have great merit. Good luck making a choice on these people. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And just a, a reply to that. Um, it, it would that would be under priority three, which we discussed earlier, right. and that would require a zoning change. Currently, that would not be allowed. So we'd have to, if we were to to end up at that type of um, um, disposition of the building, we would have to go to town meeting for a, a zoning change to be able to do what they did in Framingham. I thought it was a good idea. I never heard of that. Yeah. Yep. I go. Yes, please. Hi, my name is Stephanie Recupero. I live um, on Conley Hill. And I really want to say that I second everything that CJ said. I really appreciate that he spoke before he left because I think he's on to something very big. And after hearing all the presentations today, I think the answer personally is a solution between the two of you, between Parks and Rec and Youth and Family Services. I don't know if you've ever spoken or if you've had the opportunity to talk about maybe consolidated plan, but I do think location is key. And some of the other things that we heard about today could be really anywhere but the location of that center school is perfect for children who need to walk after school, right? A place that they can go and hang out. So I think the location is important to address what you guys are offering. And maybe there's a, you know, a consolidated plan between the two of you. And so I just want to second because the children really are the future of this town. And I think we need to support them in every way possible. Mm -hmm. And I feel very strongly about what you guys have to offer. So I hope that you guys can maybe have a conversation and come up with a consolidated we'll plan. Cooperate. Um, yes, if sir. we could, um, if uh, the vice chair would like to speak first and then. Sure. Basically, this is not a competition among anyone that's on the panel. We can have space for everyone and everything you've heard. These are the top contenders for fitting into the old building and I'll say the newer section in the, in the, in the way back. So we feel that there's enough square feet for each one of their needs as as it is and you know we could always add on to it in the, some future time and we do have 11 acres and it, you know if there was another yeah. potential need so everything you heard tonight we're not trying to choose amongst it these guys are already starting to get on the short list the short list will is still preliminary because we're asking for public input on the short list and that's kind of where we're at okay Mr. Chairman, so 
little edification to your question. We have a permanent liaison from the elected Park and Rec Board that works with youth services. We cooperate on a number of different projects. <clears throat> we also, as Park and Rec, have the ability to generate revenue on our programs and to staff similar to youth services, not dedicated necessarily to specific needs, but the general needs of athletic community center <laughs> outreach events. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for your encouragement. Yeah, yes. good luck. <laughs> um, before our next speaker at the mic, um, we received a Facebook comment from uh, Caitlin Terrell of Ash Street. Um, love to see the front facade of the school preserved and the rest uh, made into administrative building for a Hopkins Public Schools. As far as I know, we're currently renting. Uh, parking and back desperately needed. Uh, thank you for your Facebook comment. Anyone else? Eric Benson, Angel's Way. Um, <clears throat> like everyone else in the room, I'm very excited about the opportunity, especially the first three presentations, how well they dovetail <laughs> together. Um, and, and I think C CJ's comment earlier, I think everyone appreciated his, his passion, especially exciting being a local, that, that he's a local business owner. And um, I was thinking about the vocational component that they were talking about possibly for the life skills program. If he could be involved and then you tie that in with the, the, the youth program. Um, one thing that I felt like wasn't emphasized, but, but I, I think is a, a value, um, it was on one of the slides, the life skills program, the possibility of opening it up to other towns, which would then generate revenue, right? right? And, and I didn't know if you could speak a little bit more to that. That's correct. So um, typically a life skills program will have a maximum number of students allowed to attend. And typically a town the size of Hopkinton would not be able to populate its own program fully. So you would be able to, in fact, tuition kids in from other districts. And I know that our per pupil expenditure is somewhere in the 14,000s, but you can often get you know, substantially more for a life skills program. If we send a student out of district, uh, the tuition for an out of district, if they go to a, a private program, will typically start at about $60,000. So if we are able to tuition kids in, we probably wouldn't be at 60000 but we would be at substantially more than our per pupil expenditure. Good evening. Um, Mike Manning, 32 Briarcliff Drive. Um, I am chair of the Appropriations Committee, but here I'm talking on my own behalf and more being consistent as a taxpayer. And um, you know, I like all the, the grand ideas and it really, it, it looks nice, but my concern, I know you don't have any numbers yet, but I am concerned about what is the cost going to be to the taxpayer on this? And you don't have to answer that, but it's just something going forward. You know, you talk, we, we are talking about, oh, we won't, we'll save on rents, you know, that we're not paying. Um, or you know other things in that area, but I'm concerned if the overall cost of this whole renovation, you know, you know about old buildings. Some the reason we're building a new, we built a new marathon school. That sometimes building something new is economically better than than trying to refurbish something that's old. And I just want to make sure all of that is taken into account in in the analysis. You know, I, I know you tried putting in the you know the the funding sources, but I do think it's important about how much the taxpayers are going to have to bear. You know, these are nice programs, but it has to be part of it. And I just wanted to make sure that's out there at the beginning rather than when it comes to appropriations and I don't know if the bill's going to be five, that five million, 10 million, 15, you know, or because we don't really have a ballpark, but we do have to put a number on, on all those aspects. I just wanted to bring that up. Um, and I, and uh, I, I appreciate you bringing that up, and, and you can be assured one of our initial criteria was economically being able to, you know, to to do the things we'd like to do. So I think that's that's big in our initial criteria. So, And certainly we'd love to have those numbers tonight to be able to start talking about that, but we just don't. So I think, uh, so I think at this point, um, I think we've used the term, we're at the 30,000 foot level at this point, and, and we're looking at these are, these are things we'd love to see happen. Obviously, it's gonna come down to the taxpayers deciding, you know, can we do that? You know, we'd all love to see these things happen. And then, you know, can we support it by taxes or by revenue sources that are potentially derived from it? So, so I think, I think your, your point is well taken. Okay, thank you. 
we just um, received a, another Facebook um, uh, comment uh, from uh, Amin El Hadri. I'm sorry if I if I uh, messed up the pronunciation from uh, Spring Lane. Uh, would you consider a rental space for private events um, if Pox and Rec uh, decide to occupy the building? Um, ultimately, that would be something that the uh, Board of Selectmen uh, would end up deciding as to the use of the building. Um, I, I certainly wouldn't rule it out as a as a potential, you know, to defer some of the costs of the building and the maintenance uh, if that ends up being. But um, but ultimately, that's a, a policy question uh, for the board of selectmen uh, through their um, their stewardship of the building when it becomes a, um, a no longer a school asset but a town asset. And um, one more before we uh, email from um, Barry Rosenblum. Uh, he uh, mentions first great job is the hazmat correction work of 900k estimated as estimated required as part of any construction prior to reuse. That's my understanding. We would be um, obviously confirming that with the building uh, and inspectional services. But my understanding is uh, any hazmat situation that currently is. Um, uh, currently in place would it, it would have to be um, mitigated before any construction or renovation would have to be done but I, I would be uh, corrected by the the inspectional services people and I leave that ultimate question up to them mr. chairman the uh, engineering firm that's assisting us on fruit Street with the amenity building almost to be opened uh, took a look at the back section and their initial observation at a gratuitous uh, investigation was there wouldn't be that much uh, mitigation in that back section in just a small section, section. Yeah. correct the 80 section yeah. so to the uh, was it an email or Facebook that was an email email so the whole uh, 890,000 if we just utilize that back portion wouldn't necessarily be necessary that's, that's too necessary so thank you <laughs> to add a little more answer to that we received a very detailed uh, assessment of where what part of the building exactly you know which floor tile which which what has asbestos in it what doesn't uh, and they've taken samples throughout the, the building and, and, and Bob is right that the, the 80 stuff doesn't have much of that because we already you know the lead paint was already gone by that time period and but you know the rest of the stuff yeah we we've, we've got pretty close to uh, Eight hundred thousand dollars, nine hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff that we'll have to deal with, even if we wanted to tear it down. So you know, <clears throat> the initial cost if you wanted to tear it down completely, it starts at nine hundred thousand dollars, and then, you know, then it's the rest of the cost to, to do the work to 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 take it down. All right. Please. <laughs> Diane McCauley, 52 West Elm Street, and uh, I will say I'm also a past president of the Hoppington Garden Club. So my question is, is there any uh, consideration of making meeting space available for nonprofit organizations within town? Because we, we are finding that, of course, meeting space around the area is very, very limited and the cost of that space is going up. So the money that we have to spend for that is less that we can spend for our town efforts, which we do planting and all the pots around town and things of that nature. Um, that was identified as one of the priorities was meeting spaces. So uh, we, would be, we would be looking to do that and ultimately that would be managed by um, whoever the uh, Board of Selectmen uh, tasked to manage the building. Uh, but, but yes, meeting spaces were um, one of the priorities that the team has looked at. Okay, would that include evening time as well? Uh, that would also that would be part of the management. So obviously there there needs to be you know control security control of the building, mm -hmm. and somebody to make sure it's open and closed at at a certain time. Mm -hmm. um, so it, so again that's getting a little bit into the weeds, but mm -hmm. I, I think it's certainly being um, being considered. Um, and 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 it was it was something that we've we've heard uh, through our. Um, you know, resident questionnaires through the uh, through the town questionnaires and mm -hmm. through the uh, first public forum. Mm -hmm. uh, a related point is uh, because we are frequently working in town and have hoses and stuff, 
if there was any possibility for a storage space, that would be a very convenient space for us. So. Uh, again, certainly, you know, possibility. Okay, thank you. Dale Danahy, 25 East Main Street. Um, I just, I don't know who can answer this, but I, my question is, why are we tearing down the 1950s part? I know I, I heard green space and parking. You can put parking out behind the building. There's plenty of place where the marathon sets up in the parking lot there. So if we will also, I, I heard you mention, Mr. Chairman, that you know we could add on to this building in future years. Why would we add on if we're tearing something down? Seems like there's enough use between the schools, the youth commission, the um, nonprofits that we could fill that space up. Why tear it down? I, and I, you know, I guess I'll, I'll reiterate. This is conceptual at this point, and one of the one of the reasons we had considered that is one aesthetically, not the not the not the uh, historic facade, not the newer building has lots of um, uh, lots of mitigation of um, of hazardous materials in that section, and the other thing is is when the library looked at that potentially as uh, a library, it had some structural issues where it doesn't hold um, a, a, a lot of weight, so they would not have been able to use that middle section because of the, uh, the load, I guess, load-bearing part of um, their, uh, the load-bearing part of their requirements wouldn't have allowed them to be able to have books on that. So we've kind of looked at that as, as if you're going to do something like the library propose, that would be uh, what we'd be looking at doing is removing that section. Again, it's only conceptual at this point. We may find that there's such a need for meeting spaces and stuff right. that 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 stays. But like we wanted to throw out some ideas that we've been discussing. Again, at like the thirty thousand foot level. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Can I ask something? Please. Um, go ahead. So to to answer part of Dale's question. Uh, that site is really narrow, so taking that middle section down adds a little bit of traffic flow that helps the site work more functionally appropriately than it currently does. Right now you have to come down the side and your only access is to go all the way around the back and all the way out the front. So if we were to reconfigure the middle section, that may actually help use the space more efficiently. We have a uh, we have a phone uh, comment from uh, Bill Hamilton from 18 McNeil Circle. Uh, I believe storage of town records could be uh, removed to the barn on Fruit Street uh, in the old DPW space. Uh, town people don't need to go there. Rather than uh, take up space in the center of town, it's uh, access. I'm sorry, it be accessible in the center of town. Uh, my mother was in fourth grade. Was in fourth grade when they built center school. I was in fourth when they built the 50 section. Then he uh, notes that he worked with me as a retired firefighter in town. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Anyone else uh, have any comments? Any questions? Yes, so um, if we, we don't have any other questions, um, what we can do is uh, start to wrap things up. Uh, anybody from the panel have anything they want to um, leave the public with tonight? Um, we can um, start with the school department if you have anything else that, um, from your discussion or from the questions that you'd like to add to. I'll just say one more thing about tuition. Um, I think currently with our 18 to 22 population, we do send kids to out of district placements. I think if we build a, a program that's more enticing than the two classrooms we have in the high school, we may be able to keep some of our students in district as well. And I'm always a big promoter of giving kids you know, life skills and employment and a sense of civic and community in their own town as opposed to sending them someplace else. So. I would agree with that entirely. It's the 18 to 22 population is something that we've been working on transitions for a few years now, and it would be a great opportunity to serve them better here in town and also save some money. But 
Thank you. <clears throat> I think from a park and rec standpoint, when we started the process of an indoor practice facility and the investment in the town, to Mr. Manning's remark, we had felt as though that after 10 years, that would be a cost neutral uh, investment on part of the town because of our ability to serve not only the constituents of Hopkinton, but baseball and some of the other sports group that are traveling as far as Franklin or Framingham or really all over Worcester County uh, in cooperation with partnerships with Little League Baseball, with AYF Football, with the, uh, the Hopkinton Basketball Youth Association and other groups that we don't even know about. Uh, the building, the space would be big enough and we were approached by the cricket folks yep. 10 years ago for a practice facility for them, which is becoming a larger larger part of the people and the sports group that we need to serve. So Mr. Manny, to your point, that investment of a half million dollars that was awarded to us through your help, I think would be cost neutral from our original estimates after 10 years. Um, I just want to mention that I appreciate the comments that people made when they came to the microphone about including youth in the, in the decision making process about what um, if a youth center or community center or parks and rec or whatever we decide if that were to go forward that um, I'm sure that the committee would recommend that we have assembled a committee of youth to make those decisions and to help in the decision making process so thank you for that. I would just like to um, add that this is really a unique opportunity to not only provide services for so many of our, our youth, but our families and our residents. Uh, something like the Upper Charles Trail that starts in Milford and winds its way and meanders through all these different residents and neighborhoods that will eventually encircle and tie in all of the schools together. Um, and then come down the center trail through our businesses and uptown, through the common and to be able to offer all of this opportunity all the way to Hopkinton State Park is really unique and would really be something for the town of Hopkinton, I think. And also thank you to the panel for putting all your time and effort into this. So I just want to leave with saying that um, I was really happy to hear kind of echoed some of the really great community assets that the other panelists have brought forward. Um, I know that some of the things that I brought forward were far more uh, kind of practical, not as flashy. But they, uh, they're definitely things that the community needs and that the town needs to be able to support the growing community. Um, so hopefully we can look at trying to squeeze some of those, those more practical needs in along with all these great community assets that the other panelists have offered. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you so much for putting on these public forums to the team and uh, thanks for everyone who attended as well and asked your questions. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so in, in conclusion, um, what's next? The team will review the input we received from tonight's forum and move towards our recommendation to the Board of Selectmen. What can you do? Please stay involved. Attend our public meetings. Visit our team webpage. Email the team through me at csrachair at hopkinnma.gov if you have any further ideas or questions. I know many of you won't be able, wouldn't have been able to see this live or attend to, in person tonight, but HKM is going to rebroadcast this. It's going to be posted on our team webpage. It's going to be posted, um, it's going to be posted on the government meetings page of HKM's website. So this is going to be accessible to you if you haven't had a chance to see it tonight. And please feel free to, you know, to, if you think of something after the fact, to get that to us. We want people to think out of the box. Uh, we want people to give us their ideas. You never know which idea is going to be the one that, you know, rings that, rings that bell or turns on that light bulb that basically, you know, is somebody goes, that's really what we should do with this. Um, so, you know, don't be afraid to share. Um, and I, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, thank a few people. Uh, first and foremost for tonight's event is um, the folks here at HCAM. They have been more than accommodating. Um, they, they have done everything we've asked them to do and even more. Um, they, they set up um, um, the ability to receive live call-ins from people who couldn't be here. Um, they basically provided this wonderful studio for us to be able to, to get this message out tonight. And 
um, the ability for people to go back and look at it in the future so that um, so that you know you can go back and look at what we said tonight and if you've got that extra idea to you know to find out how to do it our um, our PowerPoint for tonight is going to be posted on the web page and there's some appendices to it that have some interesting information in it about the um, the details that we we talked about tonight um, like to thank my team and our liaisons um, can't do this without their input their ideas their dedication um, I'm, I'm very lucky to make my job easy as the chair of this team um, thanks to Elaine Lazarus the town's director of uh, land use and town operations uh, she has been with us from the beginning and basically has made it smooth so everything the uh, the team has needed from town um, resources has been made available to us so I would uh, I would like to you know make sure that uh, Elaine gets notice notice for that uh, effort um, as as you probably know her day probably should have ended at about 5 p.m. and it's almost 8 30 and she's still here with us so <laughs> So, and, um, and thank you most of all to everybody that's here tonight. Your time is valuable. I'm, I'm quite aware of that. And for you to come here and share your thoughts and ideas with us is invaluable to the team. And at that point, I, unless anybody has anything else I'd like to share, I would uh, move to adjourn the meeting. Okay. All right. Second. Yeah. And thank you. Before we take the vote,